Okay, yeah, so um video guys, so let's quickly talk about um the atomic structure, electronic configuration, and then periodicity of elements. So these three topics are just very one of the most interesting topics in in chemistry generally. So they are very nice, although it's a whole lot of things, but I'm going to try and just restrict myself to your to your to, to your level then to what you just need actually to pass your exams. Okay, so the first thing we are going to talk about is what atomic structure. So what is an atom? An atom is the basic building block of chemistry. That's us. That's one thing you need to get first. An atom is the, like the whole of chemistry is starting with atom. And it is the smallest unit into which matter can be divided without the release of electrical charged particles. Remember, when we're discussing the particulate nature of when we're discussing the particulate nature of matter. Uh, and I gave you guys some experiment and all. Okay, so the smallest particles in which you can scrub, you can break down matter into is what we call the words, um, the atom actually. Then, without the release of electrically charged particles, like although we already know that inside atom now there are what charged particles, right? There are some atomic particles where we have some charge, we have some that doesn't even have any charge at all. The one that are charged, the proton and electron, the one that doesn't have any charge at all. Is the word is the neutron okay the smallest part of the chemicals of a substance that cannot be broken down chemically like you cannot break them down further again that's chemically basic is what um is an atom so each atom has a nucleus in the center which is made up of what proton which is positive charge and neutron particles with no charge note it is not neutral it is what having no charge so the the, the, the term neutron means it has equal positive and negative charge but in this case it does not even have any charge. There are two different things. When you say something is neutral, it's different from when you say something has no charge. So electrons are what negatively charged and they move around the nucleus. So although before we have to, we can we go we got to the point that we know that electrons move around the nucleus, it has been a lot a whole lot of decades. So we are going to see that today. So scientists before you could scientists before they could get to the solid conclusion that the structure of an atom is like this. There were many models discussing the structure of an atom, okay. As I just said. So um, there are five atomic models, just five of them. The Dalton's billiard, billiard ball model. You are going to know what that is. This is Thompson plum powder model. That's one of the most interesting models. Then Rutherford planetary model. Then Nebel, that's balls atomic model. The electron cloud model, which is by Einstein, Ginger, and the light. So and the Bruegel, yeah. So then there are quantum mixing models. It's also the same thing with that. Let's talk about these models one after the other. So John Dalton's atomic model. That's the billiard ball model. So you can see the diagram at the top right corner there. That's just what Dalton says. That's how an atom looks. It does not really know that anything is inside that ball. Do you get my point? He just said an atom is like that. You cannot break it. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. Then he gave us all the theories, atomic theories. So John Dalton was an English scientist who came up with an idea that all matter is composed of very small things. Although it was not Dalton that first mentioned the word atom. It was a, a guy called Democritus. So Democritus was just pounding so, something. People say it's yam. He was pounding yam. It was not like, okay, this yam I'm pounding. You know, it's kind of cutting it. It's going to reach a point where, you know, let's say you have a very big one, you cut it into two. After that, you cut it into like, you cut the half into another two. You cut the two. He said it's going to reach a point where it will be what's uncuttable. I mean, uh, yeah. So the word on in, in Greek is kind of a. Ah, then cuttable means too much. That's why they now they, they bring out the word atomos. So atomos was the first this thing that they were kind of talking about. Then um after that, you know, although the guy just gave us atomos without any solid, without any solid um backup experiment and all. So that's why it is kind of not known like that, it's not recognized. So that's one thing about that. And then after he he, 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 he uh, after Democritus, so that's when Democritus gave people the insight to just start looking for what atom is. They want to kind of build on that. So get, they know the guy is not lying, but they just want to do the experiment because they are kind of what educated. So that's what happened. So John Dalton came in with his own decision. It was not like all oh, atoms are very small things that are what they should get. That's why Dalton has said, Oh, atoms are indivisible and indestructible. It was who, who said that first? Democritus, but. It was given to Dalton because he did his own, he kind of backed his own up with theories and all. So, all atoms of a given element are identical in mass and properties. We are going to see all this. 
Then compounds are formed by a combination of two or more different kinds of atoms. Then a chemical reaction is the rearrangement, the arrangement of atoms. So you give us all these theories. Uh, all matter is made of atoms. Okay, of course we know that already. For the fact that you are matter, you have mass, you occupy space, you have volume. That's it. So that's the idea behind what John Dalton gave us. Although, so we, he said they are indivisible and indestructible. Although we already know that we can destroy atoms because nuclear chemistry is destroying atoms basically. Then he said all atoms are identical in mass and properties. And you know that isotope they have got different mass but the same atomic number and they are the same elements so that one also we also broke that theory the compounds are formed by a combination of two or more different kinds of atoms so this one kind of stands to some extent but when you have polymerization you have millions millions of atoms coming together combining in polymers and all the chemical reaction is very made of atoms this is actually this one still holds still today when he said this everybody i mean that that's one of the doubting theory that was not modified she gets Okay, so to the second guys, Joseph John Thompson, JJ Thompson. So uh, what I want you guys to note is this: the Thompson in JJ Thompson does not have P. I think I saw a question on it that was testing that, so you need to be very very careful. So there's a Thompson, which is also the plum pudding model. So people call it the watermelon model. So in the sense that just look at its model as a watermelon. Don't forget, just um Thompson just because the, it was after the discovery of electron, it was the one that discovered the electron. Although not him, it was a student, but at, they just gave it to him, Charles. So if they say, well, we'll discover electron, give it to what? DJ Thompson. So after the discovery of electron, they shall know that atom has electron. She gets it. But and they also know that the atom is neutral. And if atom has electron and it is neutral, that means um, it will also have equal number of positive charge. You know? So what did it also just feel like? Okay, the electrons are just kind of floating, like the seed in a watermelon. So that means that thing you are eating a watermelon is like it's like the the red thing we are eating watermelon is like is like the positive charge while the seed of watermelon is negative charge so that's what the guys told us he said J. thompson proposed his famous plum pudding model in this model atom were known consists of negatively charged electrons however the atomic nucleus had not been discovered yet they did not discover the atomic nucleus so something knew that an atom had an overall an atom had an overall yeah, okay so um Sorry for that. Uh you thought that there must be something. Okay, I'm trying to get right stuff. Okay, yeah. Uh, no, I said okay, so Thompson kind of you know they, they discovered the electron basically. So then they also kind of know that the electron is the the atom is neutral, right? So if atom is neutral, that means and it also has the they know that atom has negatively charged particles, and they also know that it is neutral, that means they are positive charged particles. Then the atom as a whole is having positive and negative charge but they don't really know they've not discovered the nucleus basically she gets and we already know that it, because that's um uh because of that's um, according to the latest one that they give us that the atom is um the atom is basically just uh, having the nucleus inside and then the electron outside so that's just that about that then what i also wanted to say okay it's more that is also most of the time referred to as the oh i didn't the, as the um watermelon model and just like what i just explained so plum pudding or watermelon model let's know that so the first model of the atom the first was first who suggested so this is the third one actually so the first was first who suggested that Tom Sink plum pudding model was incorrect a lot of people said it was incorrect this model of it is just that after john this is Tom Sink, um after uh john doubting J. Thompson came to just see the guys wrong. She gets it's like it's like a competition of a team. So Rutherford now came in to see what well, J. Thompson is also wrong. So but when J. Thompson was give us he gave us like okay, that you know Rutherford was the one that discovered the nucleus of an atom. She gets so he already now knew that oh the nucleus is at center, and then this guy the positive guy. In fact, in his theory, he also knows that the nucleus guys you have the positive charges. Do you get my points? So let's look at that nuclear contains already central charge position with very small volume this small volume also contains bulk of the atomic mass of the atom they said that that's part of the, the um alpha scattering experiment it did to discover the electron to discover the nucleus rather they also called it the um um the alpha scattering experiment or the um if i remember in the course of this i should i will give it to you guys the good foil experiment yeah the good foil yeah so that's just that about that. The alpha scattering of the gold foil. 
that was the experiment they used to discover the nucleus of an atom. So after they discovered the nucleus, they already know that the first synthesis is the nucleus. That means they cannot say JJ Thompson is wrong. Do you get my friends? So that's what we have. So that was what I gave us the planetary model. And it's like a planet, like when you have the sun and then the planet are revolving around you. So you get the sun is the nucleus, the planet are the what? They are the electrons. That's just that. Therefore, the Bohr's model. So let me, this might be kind of looking some about what Bohr is just telling us is that, okay, um, if you look at Rutherford's model, Rutherford only said that they are revolving around you. So you get Rutherford took at the idea they gave it there. There were still major problem with this model. For example, Rutherford could not explain why atoms only emit light at certain frequencies. She get, but Nebo, Nebo came to his own and they bring in energy. So Nebo was the one that bring in the words energy level issues, energy, energy level fact about atoms. She get energy level. So and it's, not, it's like okay, Rutherford said that electrons are revolving around it. So if electrons are revolving around, if electrons are revolving around the nucleus. That means we can we already know that like okay, nucleus is positively charged, electrons are negatively charged. Now imagine a negatively charged something is revolving around the positively charged particle. Then it's going to be losing energy, losing energy, losing energy till it enters that was positively charged this guy. You get my point. But when Bohr now came in, that was the issue with um Rutherford. But when Bohr came in, Bohr now said that although they will be losing energy, but they have a level that they will lose it to. It's like a, a kid is repeating premium five, he's not going to go back to premium three, he will still be in premium five. Get. So in that premium five, they cannot be like okay, uh, the exciting state in premium five grounds like normal premium five and very good premium five. Do you get my point? So when you are in very good premium five, you can emit light that at that frequency at all. That was Bohr's model. Then the last model is not kind of is not is more like not in your syllabus basically, but just for you to know about it. So this is um where we are now having the um wave particle function by uh, Louis de Broglie, they gave my friends like that's it. everything is here basically. So they said quantum mechanics model of an atom is now this being thought as the most realistic atomic model that describes atomic mechanism as how present science presumes they work. It came to exist to existence like exist as a result of combination of number of specific assum assumptions. Number one, particles could be perceived as matters wave with a wavelength like the, the that's the wave like structure of what. Of matter of this atom, basically, the resulting from the previous assumption, atomic model which treats electron as matter waves was proposed. So Henry Schrödinger, the quantum, that, that, do you see that? Henry Schrödinger is like the boss. It's like the mind behind this model. Henry Schrödinger, you can you can see the way this field that name with that or uh, with the O with two dot on it. You get that point. That's very very important. Henry Schrödinger, the quantum me mechanical atomic model emerged from the solution of the equation for electron in the central electrical field of nucleus. Basically, this is kind of above the term but just for you to know that there's also another model after the Nebo's model. That's why this is here. There exists more than one energy level of electron in an atom. That's according to Nebo. Anytime they mention energy level, always remember Nebo. So let's, let's just leave this as it is. See, if you just need more info, you just pause and read through it. This is just basically everything you need to do, but UTM is not going to ask you questions on this. Okay, so basic properties of an atom. So number one, you have the atomic number. So we are we are, we are discussing the atom as uh, just a subject now. So what are the what's the atomic number? So when they say atomic number, basically don't forget we already know that they have both proton and neutron in the nucleus, the electrons revolving around it. So the proton, the number of the proton present in an atom is the atomic number. That's just the idea. The number of proton present in an atom is the what? In fact, present in, present in the nucleus of an atom is the atomic number. So, and it's represented with the letter Z. Uh, for example, if an atom has Z of 6, that means the number of proton there is just is 6. That's just it. Then the neutron, the neutron, we are going to talk about that later. So, then the atomic mass and isotopes. So, I just have to bring in isotopes here so that we can get it better. So, atomic mass, the number of neutrons in the nucleus affects the mass of the atom. Number of neutrons in the nucleus affects the mass of the atom. But it's not its chemical properties. What really determines the chemical properties of an atom is the electron, and the electron also has an influence that it's kind of also influenced by the proton. So most time, if you see what influences it, it is more like the word electron. But if there is no electron, you can also go for proton. Although what, the effect of proton is just kind of determining the charge. You get my point? Because if you lose one electron, the charge becomes positively charged. So you get my point? And then 
you, you get my point. That means the chemical properties of an atom is kind of in between the words, the electrons and what and the photons. But electron is the major one. So the neutron is not really interfering with the chemical properties. That means if you have carbon six and carbon fourteen and carbon twelve, they have the same chemical properties, but they have different mass. They are both isotopes. That's is the idea. So the isotope is just that they are. It, it, it is just kind of uh, isotope is a phenomenon whereby two, more than two, more than just okay. Let me just say two or more elements are having the same atoms or two, two or more elements are having the same uh, atomic number. Of course, because they are of the same elements. But different mass number. So atomic mass is passed to the sum of the number of protons and neutrons in the atomic nucleus. Okay. So the other atomic part is now then the proton, neutron, and electron. You should know that. Uh, I really, really, I don't like it when I give students the values for the charge mass, charge and mass of proton, neutron, and electron. So this is what's going to happen. So take this thing as an assignment, then get it yourself. So the problem of you getting it yourself, I think it sticks better so then drop it on the group before the stipulated time for our international class then for the nucleus what does the nucleus mean nucleus mean uh the, the the content of the nucleus let me put it that way just like nigerian means someone living in what nigeria so nucleon is for those residing in the nucleus and note your subatomic particles is more than proton neutron and electron you have other particles that is does not really concern you in this module now, like you are still just starting. There are the quarks, there are the kion, creon, all those guys are plenty. So, but the ones that are the basic ones, they are the proton, neutron, and electron. Then the nucleus, you already know that it's both proton and neutron. So, if you see nuclear number, is also the same thing as mass number, they are not wrong. How's that about that? Then the atomic discoveries, I think I wrote them here. Yeah, who discovered the proton is what Eugene Gostin. Electron is J.J. Thompson, neutron is James Chadwick, nucleus is N.S. Wilder Forge. Don't forget, I said that earlier. Then the charge of electron is what Ari Medican. Charge of mass ratio of electron is that was J.J. Thompson. And you know that's what I mean. Okay, the electron, the electron, they use the cathode ray tube to discover it. So you get it. The, that means the electrons were first called cathode rays before they have been called what? Electron. That's just the idea. And then any other thing that you may need here, yeah? let's move on. Although the uh let's, let's move on, let's move on. So electronic configuration, electronic configuration. So electronic configuration basically is just uh in just simple terms, it's just kind of also it is also called electronic structure or electron configuration. I was with someone and the person was telling me it is electron configuration and not electronic configuration. I do not know it as electron configuration. Uh, uh, and also the person doesn't know it as electronic configuration. So we are kind of arguing that it is this is that but when we check it online, we find that both are actually correct. And it's also called electronic structure. Let's not see that. So and it is the arrangement of electrons in orbitals around an atomic nucleus. Don't forget, we have shells around nucleus, right? Yes. And if you have shells around nucleus, where does the orbitals come in? So the orbitals are in the shells. That's just the idea. Electrons are actually in orbitals. Then that those orbitals are in what are in shells. That's the main thing you need to get there. So then the electron configuration of an atom is the quantum mechanical model. In the quantum mechanical model, who gave us that thing? That's the latest model, right? The latest atomic model that I said you just by De Broglie um, and all those other, all those other guys. So quantum and mechanical model is stated by listing the occupied orbitals in the order of filling with the number of electrons in each orbital indicated by superscript. So the idea here is, uh, look at that of sodium now. 1s2, 2s2, 2 p and 3s1. So the idea is okay. Look at the um the one one in one s two. What does it stand for? It means that s orbital is in the first shell, which is k shell. That one, so you get. That means the one there means k shell. The two will mean what l shell. The three will mean m shell. Do you get my point? So then the two on top of s there, the superscript there is just telling us the number of electrons. So you get. So that means in that k shell. We have s orbital and that s orbital it has two electrons that's one s2 then two s2 that's l shell right because of the two then there's s orbital in l shell and that s orbital has two electrons then the p orbital we are seeing here 2p6 um that means you know it's still two that's still l shell that means that l shell again still has what p orbital and that p orbital has how many electrons six electrons if you look at the number of electrons in l shell altogether this is what it that makes sense right then the last one is 3s1. That means that's what um, KLM shell. 
And that M shell, has, the S orbit in M shell that has one electron. That's the idea. That's how you also get the shell notation of what's 281. So they have values of filling electron into orbitals. So what about students? There are rules for this thing, but it's basically above the this thing. He, uh, I don't want to just bother you guys with that. But you need to understand that there's a rule for filling electrons into orbital. And what the other guy told us was that you feel lower energy before higher energy. So you get, and that is the other. So 1s2, you feel 1s2 before you feel 2s2, before 2 pieces, 3ds2, 3 pieces, 4s2, 3g10, 4 pieces, 5s2, 4d10, 5p, 6s2, 4f10. What we also need to understand here is this. Look at this. The other thing to take is like okay, they took this. See the way the my arrow went down, like this. Then the second one, like this. She see, see that's one, one s two, two s two, two p and then three s, three p and four s, three d four p and five s, four d five p and six s, four f five d six p and seven s. Do you get? Do you get my point? You get my point. So. And then look at the last one. They said not occupied by any ground state electron. These guys are seeing that these other guys they are not occupied by any ground state electrons, basically. But one thing just to know is that um the number of atoms we've got, you can let's just say the last element on the periodic table, the last atom on your periodic table may not even get up to 5G or 6H or I think my point. But up to this one that we have here, you can still see um you can still see. Atoms that will occupy them. That's what I'm trying to say. For example, now hydrogen will only take one S. Helium will take one S2 to check it. Then when you get to lithium, it will one S2 and then two S1. So you get that's just the idea. So periodicity of element. So periodicity basically is just telling us, it's just about periodic table. So you get there is just telling us about when you take an element, she so gets in fact, you know it's many elements. So Based on the properties of those elements, we can arrange them in a table. That one will be above the other one, and like that, that they have kind of a trend in their properties. That's how we are, we are able to get periodic table. And that trend is kind of like referred refer to as the periodicity of all these elements. Let's look at this. So periodicity definition. In the context of chemistry and the periodic table, periodicity refers to the trend of recurring variations in element properties with increasing atomic number. This is the current definition they were using. They are using actually because the father of the, of periodic table is uh, Dimitri Mendeleev. Uh, I think I the name is somewhere in the slide, right? Okay, yeah, according to Dimitri Mendeleev, look at this. So the guy used atomic weight. Mendeleev used atomic weight. She gets, but it was after some years that they now discovered atomic number by Henry mostly that they now release. And also some issue of course with when you use um atomic um weight. But the modern one is that they use what atomic number and that was by who and we mostly. So the image one they used before was that of atomic weight. And don't forget atomic weight is like atomic mass. That means don't forget carbon is having like three isotopes or let's just say two, the one that are common, carbon 12 and carbon 14. It has two different mass, but it's still the same carbon. That means if you are arranging atoms using their what? Using their atomic mass, carbon is going to exist like two times or more. So you get depending on the number of isotopes. So that was one of the issues that Dimitri Mendeleev was facing with his own kind of periodic table. But when they now use atomic number, the moment you kind of change the atomic number, you change the element. Do you get my point? That's why the one they are using up to now is the one of atomic number. So the present day one was kind of by what Henry mostly look at that. Henry mostly. Henry mostly statement of the periodic one. No. So Issues arising based on Dimitri Mendeleev can have explained this because of isotopy. Then, unlike Dimitri Mendeleev now, they are used atomic mass. And we mostly arrange atoms based on their atomic number. So you get, and then when you use the atomic number, there is no issue at all. And that's what they are actually using up to date. So, the groups on the periodic table now. So, there are people always say there are 18, eight groups on the periodic table, which is very, very wrong. We have 18 groups. 18, 18 vertical columns, 18 groups. Very, very important to know. 18 groups. And then those 18 groups, we have what eight major groups and 10 minor groups. So the eight major groups that we know is group one, group two, then you now have group three. Is like the, the way they named them is like with Roman numerals actually. She get that one will be I, two will be I, I. She get so the major groups are noted with A capital letter A, 
she good. Why the minor goals are we got more than that? What thing? So we now have group one, group I A, group I I A. Then that group thirteen is now group I I I A. So the one between thirteen or oh, two and thirteen, which is three to twelve, is now that like ten groups. She good. It's not like you can name it one to ten. So even name it just one to ten. So it's not like I B I I B. I, I be she get it that they are the minor groups. That's the idea. And then another thing you need to notice is that hydrogen is not included in group one because group one is for metals, while hydrogen is not. Hydrogen is just kind of a gas. Hydrogen is one atom to be one electron to be complete to have to be kind of to complete its atom motion, while other guys don't need that. You get my point. So hydrogen is not included in group one, or neither is it even in group seven, it's just like kind of standalone. Then the alkaline earth metals for group two, boron group, carbon group, nitrogen group, which is niptogen. Look at those names. Oxygen is charcogens. Halogen group, of course, the halogens. So you get then the noble gases groups. We are going to let's, let's just look at let's look at the predictable. You get to look at that. So this is our hey, I love this. So uh, okay. Okay, yeah. So this is group one. In this predictable is putting hydrogen here, but you already know that. Look at the color self. She gets the color looks like that of this non-metals. Do you get my point? But but just because it has one electron outside, we can put it there. She get then uh, for group two A, you see that group three instead of group three, this is group three A, but we have group what group three B here. C one B, one uh -huh. B, two B, three B at the back, four B, five B, six B, seven B. Then they call all these guys eight B all together. But you get my point. You get my point. It's not so. It's not a quantum physics. So we have group two now. Group one is other alkali metals. That's lithium, sodium, potassium. Then you notice that this is RCF, Redeem Christian Fellowship. So rubidium, cesium, and phosphorus. So RCF. You can just use that to decode that. Then for group two, you have beryllium, magnesium, and calcium. Then we look at the next one: S, R, B, A, and R, A. You can just use trobarat. Like a Muslim name, she get just for you to know. You know, you can really easily like kind of remember the first three guys easily. But the last three guys are always kind of confusing. So you, for group two, you can use trobalat, strontium, barium, and radium. Then for this transition metals, they are just a lot of uh, another word on its own. She get. Then for group three, we have budget or tree. So B A G I T. This last one here is uh nihonium. It is kind of a very new guy. Maybe they just got it. You see one one three. Then the last one is one one eight. This is the last. That means we have just what one hundred eighteen um, atoms on the periodic table. So no this. So we have budget. Then the last one. Make just the play. Then we have for carbon. We have carbon, silicon, germanium, tin, lead. Then the last one. You may not be distressed, etc. Then we have nitrogen, phosphorus, as, uh, arsenic, yeah, antimony. Arsenic and antimony, just, just so that they are kind of together on top of each other and also in the same group, bismuth. Then for oxygen, oxygen, <coughs> oxygen, sulfur, selenium, tellurium, then polonium. All those guys basically they are just on this group. Then what we now need to now know is okay, when I say a property on the periodic table. Increases down the group. That means it increases from hydrogen to it increases from hydrogen to francium, from beryllium to radium, from helium. To, although they are not always most of the time using the noble gases because they are kind of noble, they are unique. So fluorine to what to astatine. There's even another one that they just discovered. So all those kind of stuff. So that's just when I say, when I say down the group, that these are groups. The columns, they are the groups. Why the rows? The rows are the uh they are the uh periods. So let's move on. So periodicity definition. Periodicity definition. So in the context of okay, no, we've we've talked about this. We've talked about we've talked about this. So the properties and trends of the periodic table. For example, we have the atomic radius, metallic properties, ionic radius, ionization energy. Electron affinity, then electronegativity. So let's look at these guys one after the other. Atomic radius is like the, don't forget if you can, if you can try and see an atom like a circle, you get atomic radius will be uh, the distance between the nucleus and the outermost shell of that atom. 
I don't know if you get my point. It will be the distance between. Okay, so um, the atomic um, radius, I said it is the distance between the like the nucleus and the outermost shell. But one thing about this is that uh, the atom does not really look like the way you guys may think it is shaped. Like atom is, is kind of uh okay let's let's see something oh, okay 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 no when 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 um joseph okay uh when joseph john thompson gave us this model you see the way he gave us like this was his own view on our atom looks but when therefore give us like the solar system right but when you now have the real structure if you look at the solar system itself you will notice that those shells are not like concentric rings they are not like rings that are kind of one is outside no 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 in fact those rings are kind of like um they are not like in the same part they are, they are just kind of inter interwined that's just the idea so that means you cannot really see this is like the atom in fact the atomos in this direction may not be the atomos in this direction that's the idea so that's what they call it you can just see the average distance that's what people would love to use most the average distance between what the nucleus and the what atomos show that's the best thing to use the average distance between the nucleus and the atomos show if you use that you are good you get my point and then the the way they just measure is this is that okay they take two two like let's say i want to measure the atomic radius of oxygen so i will add two oxygen together to form oxygen gas i'll now measure the distance between their nucleus you get the nucleus of this and the nucleus of this one that would be like the, a diameter right for one then you now divide by two that's the radius so then what happens to atomic radius on the periodic table atomic radius basically don't forget uh atomic radius as as you are moving from hydrogen to calcium you know that it's actually increasing because this is one shell two shell three shell four shell five shell six shell seven shells so it is increasing downward but it is decreasing this way Shige. most of them increasing downward and increasing this way that's the idea then the second thing is metallic properties metallic properties is just the properties of metals so you get my point and if you look at the periodic table the best group to use to explain this is group four the major group four group four e look at carbon carbon is like a normal metal right yes they look go down you will see what thin and lead they are metals that means metallic part is increasing downward but if you look at this place sodium is here chlorine is here that's like it is decreasing so metallic part is decreasing downward decreasing that means it is increasing down the group and increasing across the period the next thing is ionic radius ionic radius is just like atomic radius if atomic radius is the radius of an atom, ionic radius is what? Radius of an ion. And then it is the same trend with what atomic radius. I'll give you a code to know all this thing without cramming. Then the next thing is what? Um, ionization energy. Uh, ionization energy. Ionization energy is just the energy to form an ion in one sense. But the real definition is just that ionization energy is the energy required to, 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 to rip off, to remove the most loosely attached electron. From the outermost shell of an atom the energy you need to remove the most loosely attached electron from the outermost shell of an atom is what is ionization energy and when you remove it you form a what an ion you get my point that's ionization energy and then let's look at the predictable uh the energy i need to remove from hydrogen if you look at although the trend is just that it increases it increases across uh the period the energy you need it increases across the world and decreases down the group because if you look at lithium, the energy you need to remove the last electron from lithium. Don't forget that's that last electron is very close to the nucleus. That means the force of attraction will be preventing you from removing it. That means the energy you need is higher compared to the one that imagine I have. I'm a, I'm a man with with one thousand child kids. So the the last kid I may not even know his name. I may not even know anything about him. So if they, if they kidnap that kid. Or well, maybe they, they inform me that's the only case where I'll I, I just kind of be away. That's the idea. So when it comes to uh uh ionization energy, the energy I need to the, the energy I need to remove the last, the most easily attached electron, it kind of what it decreases. In this case, decreases down the group and what increases across the period. So the same thing happens with electron affinity and electron negativity. Electron affinity is the energy I need to gain, you know, it's like love for electrons so you are gaining so then energy to gain is also what electron affinity and then if you look at the periodic table too um these guys clearly the metal metals we always want to gain 
why this one they don't really want to get like that so you get that I mean this guy love electron more this guy doesn't love it that much so it increases like this and what decreases that much then the last one there um electronegativity it's just like no way uh, uh, as part of your metallic properties you have electropositivity there so the negativity is like a non-metal property so it's just like um the ability to form a negative charge as you see to use ability the ability to use what uh, to gain to gain actually yes to become what to become negatively charged and you notice that it's the group seven that can do that most i mean it increases from what left to right so uh, negativity increases across the period and then decreases down the group but two things if you know it's going to drop it on the group immediately you are done with this video two things or there might be more than two things but two major things that we've discussed in this video increases down the group and also increases across the period so if you know it's going to drop it on the group maybe other than a time for the first person to do that so that's just that about this class the first class so take care